Welcome back to my February Reflections on Self-Love. Yesterday I shared with you this sort of profound realization that I had and the statement that I made, I'm not the same person I was. And how that statement really sort of stopped me dead in my tracks as I started to appreciate exactly what that meant, but also to inquire within myself, what did I mean when I said that? As I shared yesterday, it was this realization that I am not who I was before I became who I am. Now, you must realize that what I was actually describing is a journey. In fact, it's the same for you. Your journey is my journey. My journey is your journey. We are constantly shifting, changing, becoming, and yet we are stepping into through self-love who we already are. I think that this is why the concept of self-love often is confusing and even a bit of a paradox because there's this belief that we need to change in order to become this new person who we can suddenly love. And in truth, self-love is not like that at all. Self-love, as I said, is a journey. It's a journey not of becoming, but more of letting go of what has prevented us from recognizing us in our full truth, in the wholeness of our being. You may see I'm wearing a peace symbol today, and it's because this morning I had the most wonderful opportunity to create a program on peace with Susan Glazer Gelbman and Michael Coote. And by the way, if you would like to purchase the recording of that, it was absolutely an incredible program as I spoke about peace, what it really takes to create peace, and of course, how we start to live peace, the energy of peace leading us through our everyday activities. We were treated, actually honored with incredible frequencies of music, love, song, where we could feel our hearts opening and our vibrational frequency rising in order to meet with the frequency of love. And that was provided by Susan and Michael in the most magnificent way. But as I was creating that program this morning, it also occurred to me that peace requires that we are constantly letting go of what is keeping us separate from it in order to come back into alignment. And so there's something really spectacular happening here as our awareness expands we begin to realize that what we want, what our hearts are yearning for, what we desire in our everyday lives is already here. It's waiting for us, but it requires that we let go of whatever is standing in our way from aligning with being able to access it. I couldn't help but 
think about my beautiful little granddaughter who's turning one this weekend. And I don't need to tell you what a miraculous year it has been as I've watched her. I've watched her go from this tiny little infant who was 100% dependent on her caregivers for everything that she needed. But I've also watched as she has willingly let go of whatever stood between her and, let's say, becoming more independent, being able to eat food, being able to go from essentially almost motionless into motion, being able to scoot and crawl from one side of the room to the other, to get to her toys, to explore what was there already waiting for her. I watched her with sheer delight as she let go of any trepidations or fear and couldn't wait to take off, couldn't wait to be successful as she went then from crawling to pulling herself up into a standing position and now literally walks across the room independently. No need to hold on to her parents' hand or furniture. She simply stands up and walks. As she does, she is creating relationship with everything all around her. And how that relationship changes because it literally goes from a relationship built on something that simply is in her peripheral vision or is across the room. But she doesn't really have an intimate relationship with it until she can touch it, until she can feel it or smell it. Or in her case, her favorite, of course, is to taste it. And even there, you know, she willingly let go of her toothless grin in exchange for these pearly little teeth that allows her to eat food that has a greater consistency or to chew on things. What I also noticed is how animated she becomes, how excited she becomes as her parents cheer her on. They applaud her. Their smiles spread from one side of their face to the other. And the sense of great pride that they have with every achievement that she makes even her tiny little fingers picking up a little pea to eat. And I couldn't help but wonder just how essential it is that when we are intentionally engaged in our journey of rediscovering what is already there within us, becoming reacquainted more intimately with our wholeness and our truth. How important it is that we also are supported, applauded, celebrated, and yet, how few of us have that. How many of us instead are met with diminishment of some sort. And often by those closest to us. So my message today is really about learning how to celebrate ourselves every single achievement, every time we up-level ourselves 
we become closer and closer to the wholeness of our being. But it's going to require that we let go of whatever is standing in our way, whatever preconceived notion, whatever belief, whatever programmed instruction that we have within us. But clearly this journey that we are all on is an invitation for us to let go with sheer joy, sheer delight, our inability in order to claim our ability to be the greatest version of ourselves that we possibly can be. One of the other things that I realized this morning is how intricately woven self-love and peace are. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. But for today, I'm going to invite you to start to think about and identify what's in that space between where you are and where you want to be. Can you lovingly approach it with sheer delight at the anticipation of what is on the other side of it? Can you be like that one-year-old who is so excited and so delighted at everything that they find they have the ability to do? It comes from this inner strength but it also comes from seeds that have been planted within you. Seeds of your wholeness ready for you to be expressing through everything and all that you do. So I leave that little assignment with you today and know that I love you and I'm looking forward to hearing your comments. And let's talk about this more tomorrow because I think we'll have a lot to say. Bye, and I'll see you soon.